Mayday, Speedbird, Speedbird, 9595. On a January afternoon in 2008, British Airways Flight 38 was just minutes from completing a long journey from Beijing to London. Everything seemed routine. The skies were clear, the crew was calm, and Heathrow Airport lay just ahead. But just two miles from the runway, disaster struck. Both engines suddenly lost power. The aircraft now gliding silently was too low, too slow, and too heavy. The pilots had less than a minute to decide. Where do they put a massive Boeing 777 with no engine thrust? In the middle of one of the busiest cities on Earth. What caused this? A bird strike? A fuel problem? Sabotage? And most importantly, did anyone survive? Before we dive into this incredible story of quick thinking, survival, and the mystery behind the engine failure, hit that subscribe button. We bring you true aviation stories that show how thin the line between disaster and miracle really is. Beijing was cold that day below freezing, but clear. Inside Beijing Capital International Airport, the usual routine buzzed through the terminal. Announcements echoed off the high glass walls, airport workers shuffled luggage across icy tarmacs, and passengers clutched passports and coffee cups, shuffling toward their gates. At gate 40, a long line of travelers began boarding a Boeing 777-200ER. This was British Airways Flight 38, bound for London Heathrow, a flight that had made this journey countless times before. The route ahead would take them northwest across Mongolia, over the vast, icy stretches of Siberia, and across Scandinavia, before finally descending into London. It would be a flight of nearly 12 hours, cruising at altitudes between 34,800 and 40,000 feet, a place where the air is razor thin and the outside temperatures can dip as low as minus 101 degrees Fahrenheit. And that day? The thermometer hovered somewhere between minus 74 and minus 65 degrees Celsius. On board were 136 passengers and 16 crew members, business travelers heading home, tourists full of stories from their time in China, families with tired children wrapped in jackets and scarves. The flight crew was led by 43-year-old Captain Peter Burkle, with 41-year-old First Officer John Coward by his side. Both experienced, both confident. For them, it was another routine long-haul trip. The aircraft that carried Flight 38 across continents was no ordinary plane. It was a Boeing 777-236ER, one of the most reliable and trusted long-haul jets in commercial aviation. The aircraft had been routinely maintained with no known mechanical issues before departure. Everything about that day, from the checklist to the taxi, had gone by the book. What no one knew was that far ahead, over the frozen skies of Siberia, something invisible was already working its way into the fuel lines. And by the time the plane reached London, that invisible threat would bring them all within seconds of disaster. British Airways Flight 38 lifted off from Beijing Capital International Airport at exactly 2.09 in the morning, Greenwich Mean Time. The pilots kept a close watch on the fuel temperature. They had a plan. If things got too cold, they'd descend to a warmer altitude, but they never had to. The fuel never dropped below minus 34 degrees Celsius, well above its freezing point. What they didn't know was that something dangerous was already brewing deep inside the aircraft's fuel system. Microscopic ice crystals, traces of water naturally present in aviation fuel, had slowly started to cling to the insides of the fuel lines, especially in the areas where those lines ran through the pylons that attached the engines to the wings. It was subtle, quiet, harmless, until it wasn't. For over 10 hours, those ice crystals built up unnoticed. The engines ran normally. The flight progressed without a hitch. Passengers were watching movies, sleeping, preparing for their arrival in London. But as the aircraft began its final descent into Heathrow, everything changed. As the engines demanded more fuel to support landing maneuvers, that built-up ice broke loose. It surged toward the fuel-oil heat exchangers. They are devices meant to warm fuel before it reaches the engines. But instead of melting, the slushy mix froze again, right inside those exchangers choking off the fuel flow. And just like that, both engines began to lose power. Imagine being just minutes away from landing and the engines stop responding. If this is making your heart race, hit subscribe. We bring you stories like this every week. At an altitude of just 720 feet, roughly two miles from the runway, the autothrottle tried to increase engine thrust, but nothing happened. The plane was still locked onto the instrument landing system, descending exactly where it was supposed to. But with no thrust, the autopilot had to trade speed for altitude just to stay on that glide path. 
Speed dropped to 108 knots. At 150 feet, the autopilot disengaged. The first officer took manual control. Captain Peter Burkill made a split-second decision. He retracted the flap slightly, from 30 to 25 degrees, trying to reduce drag and stretch the plane's glide just enough to reach the runway. But it was barely hanging on. The aircraft cleared Myrtle Avenue, a residential street. It flew low over the A30 highway. People driving below had no idea a powerless jetliner was gliding silently above them. At 12.42 p.m., Flight 38 crash-landed, 270 meters short of Heathrow's runway 27L. The nose gear collapsed. The right main landing gear tore off, piercing through the fuel tank and the passenger oxygen system. It even breached the cabin floor, causing the most serious injury to a passenger in seat 30K. The left main gear punched through the wing route, just as it was designed to do under extreme pressure. The aircraft slid to a stop on the runway's threshold markings. Over 6,700 kilograms of fuel spilled across the grass, but there was no fire, and somehow, every single person on board survived. One passenger had a broken leg and a concussion, 12 others had minor injuries. That was it. Against all odds, 152 souls walked away from a crash that should have ended very differently. If that left you stunned, drop a comment below. What would you do if your plane lost power just before landing? Within minutes, three fast response cars, nine ambulances, and a wave of emergency personnel had flooded the crash site. The injured, 48 in total, were rushed to Hillingdon Hospital, most with only minor injuries. Only one passenger suffered a serious leg injury when part of the landing gear tore through the cabin floor. British Airways CEO Willie Walsh called it what it was, a magnificent job. He praised the flight and cabin crew for their calm under pressure. He also commended London's fire, ambulance, and police services for their rapid response. But while lives had been saved, the impact on Heathrow was immediate. All flights were suspended. In the hours that followed, the chaos rippled through one of the busiest airports in the world. Long-haul departures were delayed or cancelled. All short-haul flights were cancelled for the day. Planes were diverted to Gatwick, Luton, and Stansted. Even night flight restrictions were lifted to help ease the backlog. And the next day, over 100 short-haul flights were cancelled simply because aircraft and crew were out of position. After the smoke cleared and the passengers were safe, one question echoed through the halls of British Airways and the global aviation community. Why did both engines lose power? At the same time, during final approach, the investigation began immediately. The UK's Department for Transport handed the case to its Elite Air Accidents Investigation Branch, or AAIB but they weren't alone. Joining them were heavyweights, the US National Transportation Safety Board, Boeing and Rolls-Royce, the maker of the aircraft's massive Trent 800 engines. This wasn't just a British investigation anymore, this was global. The aircraft's flight data recorder, cockpit voice recorder, and even the quick access recorder were all recovered within hours. These black boxes were rushed to the AAIB headquarters in Farnborough, just 30 miles from Heathrow. And when the data was downloaded, it confirmed the crew's chilling account. There was no power surge, no explosion, no obvious mechanical failure, just silence from two engines that had been flawless for the entire 11-hour journey from Beijing. The mystery deepened, and the investigation took time two years to be exact. The AAIB finally released its full report on 9th of February, 2010. And the verdict? It wasn't sabotage. It wasn't pilot error. It was ice. Yes, ice inside the fuel system. While cruising high over Siberia at 4,000 feet, the aircraft had been flying in extremely cold air for hours. Even though the fuel was within standard operating temperatures, tiny amounts of naturally occurring water in the fuel began to form ice crystals. Now normally that's no big deal. Jet fuel is designed to handle small amounts of water. But on this flight, something unusual happened. The aircraft was flying with low fuel flow for a long period, and the temperature hovered in a dangerous zone engineers now call the sticky range. That's when the trouble started. Ice slowly began building up inside the pipes, sticking to the inner walls of the fuel system, silently accumulating, unnoticed. As the plane descended into London, fuel flow increased and that dislodged the built-up ice, all of it. At once, the icy slush surged forward until it hit a critical component, the fuel oil heat exchanger, or FOHE. This part is designed to warm up cold fuel using heat from the engine's oil system but it wasn't prepared for a wave of slushy ice. And in both engines, just minutes before landing, that ice blocked the fuel flow. If you're into aircraft investigations and black box mysteries, hit that subscribe button. We go deep into the stories behind every major air disaster. As for the aircraft GYMMM, 
a proud member of the British Airways fleet, its fate was sealed. It remained on the grass for two days, surrounded by investigators and engineers. The aircraft was lifted onto hydraulic jacks, then carefully towed on remote-controlled flatbeds to the BA maintenance area just 500 meters from the crash site. The British Airways logo and name were painted over. It looked ghostly, forgotten, but it wasn't. It was evidence. The Air Accidents Investigation Branch, AAIB, still needed it for analysis. But when the inspection was over, reality hit. While the aircraft looked mostly intact, the damage was just too costly to fix. In the summer of 2008, it was officially declared beyond economic repair, the first Boeing 777 ever written off in aviation history. In early 2009, the once proud jet was cut into three pieces, trucked out of Heathrow and scrapped in Kemble by Air Salvage International. A quiet end for a jet that had just saved 152 lives. No one died that cold January morning, but the shockwaves rippled across the entire aviation industry. Because of this accident, new fuel system standards were created and Rolls-Royce redesigned the FOHE to resist ice blockages, Boeing updated procedures, airlines revised cold weather operations. Thanks for watching. If you found this story gripping, hit that like button and consider subscribing for more untold stories from the skies. Until next time, fly safe and stay curious.